Embedded systems are computers in things that do not look like computers. At least that is how I describe them to non-technical people. Anything with computing elements outside the usual desktop or portable computing form and serving a specific purpose have an embedded computer system in them. Credit cards and payment systems, digital signages, appliances, and even some things you can make are embedded systems. Or put another way, embedded systems lead to ubiquitous computing. As such, I offer an elective to interested grade 10 students using the Arduino Uno microcontroller platform. Usually, it is a class of 30 students working in pairs who split and trade responsibilities on coding and wiring. One grading period is allocated to familiarize students with the workflow of uploading code to the Arduino development board and introducing basic electronics concepts to the students. The second grading period is dedicated to more complex workflows covering more complex hardware and pre-made software. The remaining half of the year is dedicated to working on a project that the students select. Where I teach, students have been selected to undergo an intensive science and mathematics curriculum from grade 7 to grade 12. Computer programming is a compulsory subject in grade 8 through grade 10, with JavaScript and Java offered in grades 9 and 10, respectively. This meshes well with the language used in the Arduino development environment, which is a framework over the C++ language. Thus, the assumption is that students are familiar with the nuances of a C-style language, such as brackets and semicolons. This leaves the core electronics concepts, pointers and dereferencing, and cryptic compiler error messages to be some of the stumbling blocks. I introduce a few concepts at a time to get students familiar with the workflow. What an Arduino program looks like, sending a signal to a pin, initially to the onboard LED, handling electronics safely and uploading code, creating a basic circuit by connecting an external LED to the board without changing the code, and so on. Grading is based on achieving the stated objectives, observed work in class, and individual reflections in the hopes that it resembles a development diary. Every batch of students is different, with varying levels of familiarity with the platform and skill. Thus, the course is dynamic enough to adjust to the general needs of the students. For example, if a batch of students seems to breeze through the topics, I usually add a challenge activity. This project is something the students choose based on their interest. The students must draft their own measurable and clearly defined project specifications for grading and their own work schedule. They are then given time during the start and middle of the two grading periods to assess their progress and make adjustments to their objectives and work schedule as needed. The students must submit per-meeting progress reports that focus on what was accomplished what else needs to be done, and how the group and the individual would accomplish that. This elective took a while to evolve from the robotics, introduction to electronics, and digital logic circuits electives. Compromises on what should be taught had to be made along the way. Or put another way, the top-down approach is not enough, but how low should I go? This is a simplified concept map of ideas ranging from the most abstract, a tally counter, to the foundation of our reality, quantum mechanics. In most university programs for computer engineering, you would probably start at learning how to code and working with electronics at the component level. Later courses would tackle the intermediate as well as higher and lower concepts needed to fully understand the subject matter. Of course, 
in a high school setting, students might not fully appreciate all these concepts. Thus, low-level topics are introduced only when it makes sense to introduce them. For example, students must be able to understand this particular circuit, the two resistances in series. This circuit explains why light-emitting diodes need a resistor in series, why switches are wired this way, and how most analog sensing circuits work. The concepts of how circuits operate, current conventionally flowing from positive to negative, Ohm's law, understanding the relationship between voltage and resistance is proportional, and Kirchhoff's voltage law, that the total voltage across everything in the circuit equals the voltage source to the circuit, must be introduced gently to the class for these to make sense. Other things, such as the resistor color code, can be glossed over by being practical, such as offering a multimeter for students to use to measure resistance, or only offering one or two types of resistors in the kit of parts. On the programming side of things, students are exposed to the practical paradigm of adapting existing code to their own. Initially, students are expected to develop their own programs from scratch or first principles such as general-purpose input-output programming, or bit bashing, as it is called. Later on, they are introduced to pre-built and third-party libraries, which introduce their own quirks in coding such as how to configure a peripheral and how to send or receive data from the device. Additional challenges come in the form of showing how coding is done on an embedded systems platform by using traditional bit shifting and manipulation. Personally, I prefer students come up with their own solutions, but showing them a traditional solution opens the discussion to more options and a deeper understanding of what goes on inside computing systems. With the availability of these skills, students are able to realize prototypes of devices for their research project in grade 11 and grade 12. This sometimes involves switching to a more advanced microcontroller platform, such as the ESP8266 or ARM Cortex-M0, both of which have Arduino compatibility layers, so their workflow is not drastically changed. A blood backflow detection system for intravenous lines, an internet-connected air quality sensor system, a blind spot detector for cyclists, are but a few research projects that students have proposed and implemented with embedded systems. Internet of Things represent the next logical leap to offer after this elective, especially with the very low-cost offerings of the ESP8266 and the ESP32 Wi-Fi boards. These offer another challenge on how low-level discussion should go when talking about IP addresses and the various protocols available. But these challenges might be well worth looking into to provide a deeper understanding and appreciation of ubiquitous computing. Every school will have their own take on how to introduce physical computing to their students. I selected the Arduino platform because I wanted STEAM-proficient high school students to experience their relationship between computing and electronics at a low level. By gently introducing one or two new concepts at a time, it builds the confidence of the students in their ability to work with these devices, understand technical references, and foster best practices working in a development team. Thank you and have a pleasant day.